During the summer I got a few new fragrances, so in this video I'm gonna talk about new bottles in my collection, plus a few discovery size mini bottles that I brought from Italy, the ones I haven't mentioned yet on my channel. I myself love to watch such haul videos because I find it interesting to see what people choose to buy among so many perfumes, so many fragrances. I am very careful with choosing the fragrance. I prefer to have a sample before I make a decision to buy something, or at least to properly try it in the store on my skin. But there happened to be one blind buy and not very successful, honestly. So let's check some newcomers on my perfume shelf. The first one is from Alfactive Studio and it's called Still Life in Rio. On my channel I have a couple of videos about this brand and my first impression after tasting almost all of their scents. I will leave a link to my videos in the description box. Olfactive Studio has a lot of beautiful perfumes, but this one just clicked with me and I put it to use in summer and I'm absolutely happy with my purchase. I can describe this scent as a slightly boozy, like a um, tropical cocktail with citrusy ginger coconut. It's not too sweet, it's even a bit bitter. This ginger is so good here. It's not loud, it's not screaming, but instead it's more sophisticated, moderate version of the boozy summer fragrance. It's really delicious. It's rather relaxed fragrance. It brings to my mind the image of watching the sunset in the bar. It's really, it has a very good feeling and puts me in a very happy mood. <laughs> Olfactive Studio also offers a fragrance called Steel Life. I tried it too and it was also very good. They are really close. But I still prefer Still Life in Rio because this version has a prominent coconut and ginger note, which I found really appealing. It's nice. Other notes here are citruses, yuzu, lemon, mandarin, also mint, different pepper notes, plus rom, woody and leathery base. It's definitely a unisex fragrance. In fact, my husband Eli is using it sometimes. We shared this fragrance on our on the day of our wedding anniversary we went to the restaurant and it's kind of nice going out scent especially for summer so yes really happy with my purchase really enjoyed still life in rio so the next scent i would like to mention is in fact a body spray and I blind bought this one, Sol de Janeiro 62, pistachio and salted caramel. I was super curious about this Sol de Janeiro scented sprays because I saw a lot of them on YouTube, on Instagram, they look so attractive, such a nice bottle. I thought why not to try it, it's not so expensive, so I order it online. The notes that brand offers are pistachio, almond, heliotrope, jasmine petals, vanilla, salted caramel and sandalwood. It sounds so good, but I have to be honest, it doesn't suit me that well, even though it smells really nice. The problem is that I find it too heavy, too strong. It's not your sweet gourmand body spray that will make you smell like a lovely cookie, no. No. It's a bit salty, pretty full, kind of sexy scent. I don't know where and why and how should I use this fragrance, except for the humid days. That's when the scent sounds and performs so nicely. It can be so great for lucky, happy people living in the warm countries, going to the beach, by the ocean. But for me, it's kind of a fail, blind buy. I do use it sometimes though, we've been having a few humid rainy days here in Finland and I sprayed it on my skin, I also sprayed it in the bathroom and I quite enjoyed it. 
It's the only bottle of anything perfume-like that I keep in my bathroom because all the rest of my collection I keep in a shaded dry place like it is supposed to be. So it's not bad, but I wouldn't buy it again. Let's move on to the next fragrance. Recently I posted on my channel a travel video from Italy and I promised to talk about Sucre Noir from Arte Profumi from Rome. So let's have a look at it. I wanted to bring a full bottle of perfume from Italy, some scent that I will link to my trip. And I was thinking that maybe I will look for something woody because I'm really missing some good woody scents in my collection. Or maybe for something truly Italian like citruses or neroli. I already have quite a few vanilla fragrances. But still, I bought a vanilla scent. <laughs> this one is exceptional. When I tried it, I sprayed it on my skin and left the shop. And I just couldn't forget this scent. I was catching it in the air all the time and I had to come back to Arte Profumi shop. and Because I couldn't leave Rome without this baby. It's so good! It's a 50 ml bottle, it's transparent. 100 ml bottles uh, come in a black matte flacon. So what is it? It's a scent of vanilla pod. It's pure, deep, natural Madagascar vanilla pod. Nothing less, nothing more. And it is so good! It's not super sweet, it's not artificially sweetened, but instead it's just like a natural vanilla or vanilla sugar. Slightly sweet, very enveloping. The notes that creator suggest are brown sugar, orchid and vanilla. Simple. I really can't wait to wear it in autumn. It can be such a cozy solution for those melancholic fall days. And what is important to mention, it's strongly projecting scents. Two sprays is enough to fill the room and it lasts very long. It's really pure vanilla scent. It doesn't transform that much. It's just a vanilla monologue from beginning to the end. And that's what I love about it. I'm really waiting for the temperature to drop so I can wrap myself in this scent. But not yet. <laughs> Let's still enjoy a bit of summer, right? <laughs> My bottle can wait. Here is my most used fragrance at the moment. I'm coming home from niche brand Floraiku. It's my addiction this summer. I don't know, but my hands themselves are reaching for this bottle almost every morning. Mm. It's a cup of jasmine tea with ginger and half a spoon of honey. It's so beautiful. Beautiful, fresh, clean fragrance. Jasmine here is so good. I have a video on my channel where I review 15 fragrances from Floraiko and I rate them. And this one received 10 out of 10. And I still think it's a 10. I really love it. Let me remind you the notes. Ginger, cardamom, white tea, jasmine tea, bergamot, citrus, also pink pepper and some woody notes, ambery notes. It's pretty light fragrance. I put maybe four or five sprays and I really love to carry this travel spray uh, with me and refresh the scent in the afternoon. You know the Floraiko system, you just insert the spray like this. And there you have it, the travel spray. I think that everything is so great about this fragrance. The bottle is absolutely stunning, the cap, the haiku in the back, this Japanese style poetry. It's really nice. And of course the scent itself. It belongs to Floraiko's Old Cha collection, inspired by the art of tea ceremony. 
And even though jasmine is a rather prominent note, it's still a tea fragrance. The tea accord is there, it's not lost behind other notes, and I really love it. Truly my most used fragrance at the moment. I also have a few sample-sized uh, perfumes that I would like to mention in this video. I've been enjoying recently this discovery set from Laboratorio Olfativo, the citrus collection. And I have to say, I'm really digging this Mandorino fragrance. <laughs> I was thinking that I might get tired of such straightforward mandarin scent, but no, I really like it. I even consider getting a full-sized bottle. But I have a full video about this citrus collection, so I will link it below and let's not stop on them at the moment. But instead, let's check a few fragrances that I haven't mentioned yet. I have a beautiful trio from the same brand, Laboratorio Fortivo, from the Nero collection. So let's have a look at those ones. First of all, all those samples have a cap. I've never seen 2ml uh, sample with a cap that's a level. So first one is called Van Hera. The notes mentioned are bergamot, cardamom, some peppery notes, sandalwood, cashmere wood, cinnamon, vanilla, karma wood, timber silk, amber and musk. It's a woody vanilla, a bit dark, a bit dusty even, but it doesn't really work for me. Because of the cinnamon, I don't really enjoy cinnamon note in fragrances. I have no problem with cardamom, but cinnamon usually feels a bit mm, uncomfortable for me. But I have to admit, it's really perfectly tailored and I can understand why people like it. But I guess it just doesn't work for me personally. The next one was uh, nectar. Nectar. Let's spray it, let's try it. <laughs> this one is more appealing for me. It's sweet, deep honey scent. Beside honey, we get here clary sage, bergamot, grapefruit, alamy, red berries, honey, leather, olibanum, davana, tiramisu accord, cinnamon, tonka beans, vanilla, vetiver, cedarwood, and patchouli. So, rather complex fragrance, and again cinnamon. But here, it's not very prominent, it's hidden somewhere, and it really feels okay for me. I truly love the idea of honey scents in perfumes. So far, I have tried one more honey scent, it was Naxos from Zorjov, and it was quite good, very delicious. So is this one. My overall impression of this fragrance it's a great Middle Eastern inspired scent. It's very complex and dessert-like. It's funny because if they wouldn't have mentioned this tiramisu accord, I wouldn't even get it. But now when I know, I'm like, yeah, it sort of smells like tiramisu, a bit cakey, a bit sweet. I'm interested to try it during the colder season and let's see if I want a full-size bottle because it's really interesting and also it's a new release, it's a new fragrance Okay, the last one is called Toncade That's a really surprising perfume. It's very dark and mysterious. It combines sweet notes like uh, dry fruits, vanilla, cardamom, and a bit dirty, smoky notes of tonka beans, patchouli, and incense. Oh, it's a bit dramatic even. It feels for me like something ancient, timeless. It kind of brings me to the ancient church or maybe to the ruins of ancient city. 
There is something dark and silent in here. It makes me think that sometimes we choose fragrances because we like them, we like the scent and we want to wear it, but fragrances can also be used to create a certain mood, to create a certain image. So Tonkada brings me the feeling of protection, self-defense, like a thick walls of ancient city where you can hide mentally uh, if you want to protect your private space, to not be disturbed. It might be good to have something like this in my collection, a bit uh, therapeutic scent. It generally makes me think, because previously I would only buy the scents that were tasty and everyone loves them, but fragrances can also be a tool to change your mood, to bring you to a certain state of mind, to elevate you or to comfort you. So nowadays I'm starting to think what I'm missing in my perfume wardrobe and such fragrance of solitude, self-protection is something that I might need sometimes. But coming back to the scent itself, as I mentioned, it's a bit dirty and at the same time sweet fragrance, very deep and enveloping. It can be really nice on a man, but unfortunately my husband doesn't like tonka beans. <laughs> but let's see, maybe I will wear it and get a bottle for myself. So that was it for today's video. I hope it was interesting to watch. I got a few bottles this summer, so it's nice to track and document how my collection is growing. I wish you a good day. Bye.